Well, hello everyone. God bless you all. It's good to be with you one more time to share with you the living word of God. Amen, amen, amen. Well, we're preparing today to, uh, we're preparing for our three-day fast starting tomorrow, the 29th. 30th and the 31st, and I, I want to uh, make sure that everyone is uh, up to date. Now the 28th, 29th, and the 30th. Our fasting days this week, uh, this the end of this month, is the last three days of the month, is the 28th, 29th, and the 30th. Amen. <clears throat> And I want to encourage you all, all, especially all you intercessors, I want to encourage you to, to come, come forth and take part in this because this is what we do. Every month, at the end of the month, we pray and fast. And I'm calling for all intercessors, all intercessors. We need to come together right now. Amen. And spend this time together in the Lord. Amen. And so on tomorrow morning at uh, 6 a.m., the fast begins at 6 a.m. in the morning. And it's going to continue until 6 p.m., water only. From 6 a.m. to 6 p.m., the fasting begins at 6 a.m. until 6 p.m., water only. And I'm believing that all of you are going to take part in this. Amen. I'm believing that because I know that many of you are you know you've been enjoying you've been enjoying this time together throughout the year we had the this is the last this is this is next to the last month of this year now next month we're going to fast amen the last three days of the month but right now for november we're going to do it amen and we're going to go into and, and we're going to go into de, in the month of december under a fresh anointing. How many of you tired of just uh, watching life pass you by and you know and you feel like you've been left behind? Well, it's time for you to get on board. It's time for you to begin to see yourself rising above whatever the circumstances that you have been facing. It's time for you to see yourself rising above that circumstance because you are the head and not the tail. You are above only and not beneath. Amen. Everything, every promise, every every destiny that God has prepared for you to receive is already provided for you. It's yours. Amen. It's your destiny. So let's go forward today and let's prepare our hearts for this time of prayer and fasting. Let's pray. Father, we come to you now in the mighty name of Jesus. Father, we thank you for this time. We thank you for this day. We thank you, Lord God, that your word is alive health and healing to all our flesh. And Father, as we prepare our hearts, as we prepare our bodies for this fast, God, we're asking you to strengthen us for this fast. Lord, this is a, a fast that you have ordained. This is a fast that you have called us to from 6 a.m. to 6 p.m. And Father, I believe that you're going to anoint every intercessor and everyone that want to take part in this fast to, 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 to pray properly. At 9 in the morning, 12 at noon, and 3 in the evening. And Father, we're going to set our alarm clock so that we won't miss out on those prayer times. And we're going to start our prayer time in the morning at 6 a.m., Father. Our fast start at 6 a.m., and we're going we're gonna to begin thanking you, Father, at that time. Those that are up at that time, amen. We're going to start thanking you for that, for that precious time that you have uh, uh, given us to fast and to pray. So, Father, I bless your people, and I thank you for them right now. In Jesus' mighty name, amen and amen. Glory to God. You know, we do this every month. This is not something that is new to you. This is something that we do every month. Prayer and fast. Pray and fast. The last three days of each month, we did it throughout the whole year. And we're not going to have no exceptions today, this, this month. Amen. And especially on next month. Next month is going to be one of the most powerful 
powerful times because that's the last month. Amen. December is the last month of the year. And those of you that, 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 that have stuck it out with us throughout the year, I believe that you're going to experience a supernatural outpouring of the spirit of the living God like you've never experienced before. Amen. And I'm telling you, it's going, it's, it's, it's going, to, be, it's going to be wonderful. It's going to be wonderful because throughout the year, God has ministered to our hearts and he has, and he has dealt with us in different areas of our lives. Amen. To help us to come to, to the right understanding of who we are. See, God wants you to know who you are as a child of God. Many of uh, God's people, they know that they are born, they know they've been born again, but they don't have an idea of who they really are as a child of God. And I believe that as we enter into this year, as we prepare to go into the new year, we're going to, God is going to begin to reveal to our hearts our divine purpose, our divine calling, and our divine destiny. You know, we all have a divine calling, we all have divine destiny, and we all have a divine purpose, each and every one of us, amen. So as we begin to trust God and begin to call upon his name, Amen. At the end of this, uh, these last three days of this month, and then December, amen. And January, we're going to do a seven-day fast, a seven-day fast, amen. And then we're going to go from that point on three, every the every last days of the month, every three last days of the end of the, each month next year, we're going to do the same thing like we did this year. We're going to fast. We're going to pray, amen. We're going to continue to fast and pray. Every year until God say that's enough. And you know what? He's not going to say that's enough. Because see, God wants to get us all into a mindset of prayer. He wants us all to, to, to establish that relationship, that fellowship with him. Amen. Through prayer. The relationship that God wants with you, he wants that son and that father and son relationship. Or he wants that father and daughter relationship. Whichever the case may be. Amen. But I believe that the relationship that God is looking for right now is that relationship that's going to help us to see ourselves the way he sees us. You see, because we are created in the image of God. He created us in his own image and after his likeness. And so with that being said, we should all have a desire to understand who we really are as a child of God. See, many have been called into the body of Christ but not all know who they are as a member of the body of Christ. I can go to my family and I know that we, I have my brothers and sisters. Amen. I know where I fit in the family. I know my, I know what area I fit in the family. But we know, we need to know that same thing in the, in the body of Christ as a body, as, as a member of the, of the, of, of the body of Christ. We should know who we are. We should know where we fit in. We should have a sense of a, of, of idea of our assignment. Amen. We, we, have, we need that understanding. How can we achieve uh, objectives and goals, obtain goals, amen, if we don't have a, a general idea of the purpose, amen, or the calling, or have an understanding of the destiny that we are reaching toward, amen, that we are pressing toward. We have to have an understanding in order to be able to uh, focus and to reach that goal, Amen. And I'm going to, and I'm just, I'm just challenging you because you see, I'm being challenged myself. And that's why I'm challenging you to seek God and to know Him, not just to know Him, but establish that relationship with Him, that you and Him would be just like, I mean, close. You know what I mean by close? I mean close, Amen. So when, when, when you're in danger, that he will tell you danger. You remember that robot on, on, on that, that used to come on, danger, danger. We need God to let us know when danger is approaching. Amen. And so when we, when we, when we have that relationship with him and when we spend that time in, in communicating with him through prayer, amen, I believe that relationship is established. I believe that relationship is established through prayer. Amen. And so I want to encourage you, I want to encourage you all to just hang in now because you see, you, you might have gone through some things this year 
this year you 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 went through a lot. Many of us have gone through a lot this year. But you know what? It it did it didn't destroy us, but it's made us stronger. It made us stronger. And we're gonna go and we still got a few, couple more months. We still got another month in this year. And so you might go through a few more things before the end of the year. But still, it's not gonna it's not gonna destroy you. It's gonna make you stronger. It's gonna make you stronger. And so be prepared to follow the guidelines that our Lord lay out before us. Amen. Be prepared to yield to him in any area that he called you to yield to him. Because you see, the God that we serve, he's holy and he's just. And he's calling us to himself. Amen. He's calling us to himself. Now, what about you? Are you willing to lay down your life? And to take up your cross and to follow him? Or are you just going to stand back and just be uh, uh, bystanders? You want to look at and see what's going on. Amen. God doesn't just want us to look and to see what's going on. He wants us to take part in what's going on. Why? Because he has a destiny for us. He has a purpose, divine purpose. And he has a plan for each of our lives. Amen. And so when we look at it that way, we know that we are not here by accident, but divine providence. Amen. We're here by divine. We're here, by, we're here on a divine purpose for a divine purpose. Amen. And so God has angels already positioned, already in position right now to carry you into the place where you can be identified as his son. Amen. What I mean by that? It's time for you to begin to walk in the authority. It's time for you to begin to walk in the power of who you are as a child of God. Remember, you and God make the majority. You and God makes up the majority. Amen. And so let's prepare our hearts today. Let's begin to get ready for this great adventure. Amen. Are you, uh, are you with me? Let's start preparing ourselves and get ready for this great adventure. Amen. Because God is going to send his angel before you. God is going to send his angel before you. And, and I want to know, are, are you ready for that? Are you ready for God to send his angel before you? Amen. Because he's, 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 he's going to do it. He's going to do it. What is he going to do? Let me just tell you. Let me just tell you one more time. Amen. Because you see, you need to know. Because you got, it's time, it's time to prepare your hearts. Amen. He's going to prepare. God is sending his angels before you. Amen. And I want to, uh, let's just go to uh, the book. I'm going to take you to, uh, let's go to the book of Exodus. I want to take you to the book of Exodus chapter 23 first. Exodus chapter 23. Chapter 20. I, I believe. Let me just look and see. Amen. Glory to God. Here we go. 2320. Let's go to Exodus 2320. Because you see, I'm believing that God has dispatched angels already. And they're about to direct you in the way that you should go. Amen. And so the Bible says right here in the book of Exodus, chapter 23, and verse number 20 says, Behold, I send an angel before thee to keep thee in the way and to bring thee. Into the place which I have prepared. You see, God has prepared a place for you. So if God has prepared a place, then don't you know that there's a there's a, a, a preparation that must take place in our hearts? There's a preparation that must take place in our lives for us to get into that place that God has prepared us to walk in. Amen. You see, there's a divine destiny awaits us. <clears throat> There's a divine purpose and a divine destiny await us. Amen. So as we 
get ready and as we prepare ourselves through prayer and fasting, amen, I believe that you're going to enter into that place. You're going to enter into that place where the Lord God Almighty is going to be glorified in your life. And I want to know, are you ready for that? Are you ready to experience the goodness of the Lord? Amen. Look at verse number number 21. Beware of him and obey his voice. Provoke him not, for he will not pardon your transgression, for my name is in him. But if you doubt, but if you but if thou shalt indeed obey his voice and do all that I speak, then I will be an enemy unto thine enemies. Are you ready for God to begin to, to, uh, 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 I mean, you, you, you talking about you got your butted guarding your back. Are you ready for God to guard your back? He's going to be an enemy to your enemy. Amen. And I'm telling you, some of us have some enemies out there that we don't even know about. There's people putting their mouth on people. And, and you know what? God is about to start dealing with those people's hearts. And I know there's some people that have been bad mouthing uh, the, the ministers of God. And God is about to start dealing very strongly with those people who are putting their mouth on his servants. Amen. Because you see, when 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 we do when we when we do the will of God and people go putting their mouth on us, it's just like witchcraft. And God is saying to us today. The people that have put their mouth upon you, try to slow you down, try to manipulate people to keep them away from you. Amen. God's saying today, today I'm about to put an end to that. I'm about to put an end to that. I will cause them to repent or I will cause them to, oh my God, or I will call them to be, I will, I will put, I will take them off the scene. I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna put it like he, like I'm sent, like I'm hearing it in my spirit. You gonna either repent or you gonna be put off the scene, amen. And so I, I advise you, if you are one of those busybodies that is putting your mouth on the man of God, trying to uh, hinder the people, trying to stop people from from going around the man of God, or trying to hinder the man of God's ministry, then you better watch out because you're treading on dangerous ground as of now. Because this year, this year, God has been gracious toward you. Next year, God is going to deal with you. <laughs> oh my God. This year, God has, been, he, God has been gracious toward you. He had mercy upon you. But next year, he's going to start dealing with your heart in a very powerful way. Remember, God chastened those that he loved. He chastened those that he loved. Amen. And he rather chastise you and cause you to, to acknowledge your wrong than to allow you to continue doing it and thinking that it's all right. Amen. Because it's not all right. You can't interfere with the calling of a man of God's ministry or his life. Amen. Because you, you find yourself fighting with God. You find yourself fighting with God. Amen. Look at verse number 22. And uh, the book of uh, Exodus chapter 20, verse 22, chapter 20, verse 22. But if thou shalt indeed obey his voice and do all that I speak, then I will be an enemy unto thine enemy and an adversary unto thine adversary. Because if you're not for us, then you are against us. And if you are against us, that means you're putting your mouth on us. And if you're putting your mouth on us, you have not, you're not, you, you're not for me. So that means you're an enemy. And God's going to be an enemy to my enemies. God is going to be an enemy to my enemies and an adversary to my adversary. Amen. Now I'm telling you this year, 2018, I, 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 I highly encourage you. Amen. If you're going to talk about a man of God, talk about how you can be a blessing to that man of God. And not, uh, uh, not trying to hinder the work that God has given him to do. Amen. Amen, amen, amen. Well, now let's go now. Let's go now because you see, verse number 23 says, For, thy, for mine angels shall go before thee and bring thee, into, bring thee into the Amorites, the Hittites, and the Perizzites, 
and the Canaanites and the Hivites and the Jebusites, and I will cut them off. God is going to cut off those enemies that's been working overtime trying to block and stop the work that he's, that he's doing. Amen. There's about to be a reckoning. Amen. Now I'm going to take you on over to one more verse. One more verse. Verse number 24. Thou shalt not bow down to their gods, nor serve them, nor do after their works. But thou shalt utterly overthrow them and quite break them, break down their images. And ye shall serve the Lord your God, and he shall bless thy bread, and thy water, and I will take sickness away from the midst of thee. Amen. That angel that God is assigning, he's going to bring you into a place where he's going to, your food is going to be blessed, your water is going to be blessed, everything you touch is going to be blessed. Are you ready for that? Amen. Are you ready for that? Glory to God. Now in the book of Isaiah, in the book of Isaiah, I want to go to chapter 58 in the book of Isaiah 58. Glory to his name. In the book of Isaiah chapter 58. Now, now notice what he says right here in verse number, verse number five. Verse number five says, it shall come. It, is it, is it such a fast that I have chosen a day for a man to afflict his soul? Is it to bow down his head as a bullridge? And to spread sackcloth and ashes under him? Will thou call this a fast? An acceptable day of the Lord? Amen. God is called this fast. Now, we're going to do this fast. And we're going to do it as unto the Lord. Amen. And God is going to strengthen you for this fast. He's going to anoint you for this fast. He's going to empower you for this fast. And he's going to direct you in your prayer time in this fast are you ready are you ready to 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 go forward now verse number six is 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 not this the is not this the fast that i have chosen to loose the band of wickedness amen notice he said you're going to loose the band of wickedness to undo the heavy burden amen and look at look what it goes on to say now i'm reading from the book of isaiah chapter 58 verse number six now and to let the oppressed go free. And the yoke, and that and that ye break every yoke. Amen. And that ye break every yoke. Now notice what he says now in the book of Luke chapter 4 and verse. Luke chapter 4. Now let's look at verse number, verse number 18. Luke chapter 4 and verse number 18 it says. The spirit of the Lord is upon me because he had anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor. He has sent me to heal the broken heart, to preach deliverance to the captive and recovering of sight to the blind and to preach the acceptable year of the Lord. Amen. Glory to God. To set a liberty to them that are bruised and to preach the acceptable year of the Lord. God is going to move swiftly during this time. People, there's going to be some deliverance taking place. There's going to be some healing taking place. And people, the joy of the Lord is going to begin to flood your heart. And all of a sudden, you're going to begin to experience the peace of God like you've never experienced before. Are you ready for that? God is about to do a new work in your hearts today. Starting tonight. Amen. Tomorrow at six mo in the morning at 6 a.m., you're going to enter into a new place. You're going to enter into a new place that you never walked before. And I want to know, are you ready for it? I'm going to pray for you all because I know that God is about to do something, amen, that eyes have not seen nor ear heard. Neither have it entered into the heart of man, the thing that God has prepared for them that love him. And I believe that you all love the Lord because I love the Lord. I believe that you all love the Lord just as much as I do. And I believe that we all are about to experience a supernatural outpouring of the Holy Ghost. A supernatural outpouring of the Holy Ghost. Amen. Are you ready for that? Glory to his name. Hallelujah. Now, Father, 
in the name of Jesus Christ, the Son of the living God. I pray for all the intercessory prayer warriors, Lord. I pray for all those that's going to be fasting and praying on these next three days, on the 28th, 29th, and the 30th. And Father, I thank you, Lord God, that as we fast and pray during these next three days, God, that you're going to move supernaturally among us. And God, you're going to cause the heavens to be open above us. And we're going to experience the angels, the ministry hosts, ascending and descending upon us. And your name is going to be glorified, Father, because God, you're going to strengthen us. You're going to empower us. You're going to direct us in which way to pray. You're going to direct us on whom to pray for. And God, you're going to show us how to walk in divine authority in prayer. Because we're going to speak as one that is having authority in prayer. And the powers of darkness that is working or trying to establish a stronghold over our cities, over our, our, over our, our, our nation, over our communities. Father, we believe in that even the strongholds over our communities is going to be demolished, going to be destroyed, going to be pushed back from its position in the name of Jesus. And Father, I thank you, Lord God, that the spirit of witchcraft and the spirit of divination, Father, will have no place, will have no place in the name of Jesus. And God, I'm also believing that during this time of prayer and fasting, Lord God, many people that have been afflicted with uh, colds and flus and so forth and so on, Father, we believe, Father, that many people is going to be healed and delivered in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. So, Father, I release my faith for your healing power to be, to, 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 oh God, to just hover above your people. And as we're walking through this time of fasting, God, we're not going to grow weak. We're going to grow stronger because we are seeking first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. And you said that all the things that we have need of shall be added unto us. For those that have need of healing, Father, they're going to be healed. For those that have need, Father, of finances, they're going to be blessed financially. For those that have need of, of a, a, a healing in a relationship, that relationship is going to be healed. For those that are, that are, that are married and, and are struggling in a marriage, Father, God, you're going to strengthen their marriage. God, I thank you even now, Father, that you're going to touch the children's heart. And God, you're going to minister life, health, and healing in the name of Jesus. I bless your people. I thank you for what you're going to do. And I thank you for what you have been done. And I thank you for what you are currently doing now in Jesus' name. Oh, Lord God Almighty, there's none like you, Father. There, let the, all the angels up in heaven, Father, those that you have already sent out on the assignment to go before us, Lord God. Father, help us to be good followers, Lord God, of the angelic host that you have already dispatched on our behalf. Help us to see ourselves, Father, as you see us. And help us to be the light of the world, the city that sit upon the hill that cannot be hid. Father, let us be that candle, Father, not one that's trying to go under the, hide under the bed. But let us be that candle that will set upon the candle stand, Father, that will give light to all of them that are in the room. Father, that your word may not be hindered, blocked, or stopped by any force of any kind. But that your kingdom will come and your will will be done in our lives in earth as it is in heaven. Father, we thank you. We praise you for it in the mighty name of Jesus. Now, Father, I pray, Father, for every, every man of God and every intercessor, Lord God. I pray, Father, that you will begin to breathe a freshness upon them, upon the, the men of God and upon the women of God, upon their husbands and upon their wives. Father, breathe a fresh upon them right now. Father, let the deliverance begin in the house of God. Even during this time, Father, God, we're coming out to the last days of the year, the last days of the, of the year, Lord God. And Father, we want, Father, that we go out of this year carrying nothing from this year over into next year. We want to have a fresh new beginning on January the 1st, God. And God, we know, Father, that right now is a time that we lay down every sin and every weight which does so easily beset us that we can continue to run this race with patience, Lord God, looking unto Jesus as the author and the finisher of our faith. Let us not look at the things which are seen, Lord God, and Father, thinking that this is it. 
But Lord God, let us look at the things which are not seen. Because the things which are not seen are eternal. And Father, we are not basing our eternity on the things which are seen. But we are basing our eternity on the things which are not seen. God, your word is alive in us. Your word is health and healing to us. And as we look at the life source, Father, we know that our life source is not in ourselves except by you. Because it's in you that we live and move and have our being. It's not in our own strength. It's not in our own ability. It's not what we can accomplish because of our education, Father, or our lack of education. But God, is our dependency upon you. God, you wish that we all depend upon you. You wish that we all would lean and depend upon you because you said in your word that trust in the Lord with all thine heart and lean not to thine own understanding. And God, you said in all thy ways acknowledge him and he will direct our path. And Father, we know that your word will not turn void but your word is true so father i speak blessings over your people i speak blessings over your people i cancel every demonic assignment against the families i cancel every demonic assignment against the household i cancel every witchcraft spirit that's been spoken over their lives father and i release the spirit of faith i release the spirit of truth i release the spirit of life among them in the name of jesus oh god let your word be made manifest among us in these last days like never before. Let us see ourselves, Father, rising. Let us see ourselves, Father. Oh God, you said arise and shine for thy light has come. Let us see us walking in the light of your word. Let us see ourselves walking in the strength of your word. Let us see ourselves walking in the power of your word. Because, Father, your word has given, you have given us your word above all else, Lord God. You have said to us that, that no weapon formed against us will prosper. And you said, God, that every, every, all the power of the enemy is under our feet. You've given us a place, God, in you because we've been seated in heavenly places in Christ Jesus. Now, Father, I pray for my family. I pray for my wife. I pray for my daughter. And I ask you, Father, in the name of Jesus, that you would touch them right now from the crown of their head to the soles of their feet. Father, I thank you, Father, for your miracle working power, Father. Father, the germs and things that are trying to attack their body. Father, in the name of Jesus, I rebuke it right now off of them in the name of Jesus. And Father, I release my faith for your healing touch from the crown of their heads to the soles of their feet. And I declare, Father, that we are walking in divine health. We are walking in divine health. And healing is the children's bread. So we receive it now in the name that is above every name. I bless your people, Lord God. And I bless my family. I thank you, Lord God, that your word will not return void, but it will accomplish those things that pleases you. For we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against the powers and the rulers of darkness of this world, and against spiritual weakness in high places. Therefore, Father, we put on the whole armor of God today. We put on the whole armor of God today, and we gird up our lawn with the truth. We put on the breastplate of righteousness. Our feet shine with the preparation of the gospel peace. And above all, Father, we take a shield of faith to quench all the fiery dust of the wicked. That when we come forth, Lord God, that we will come forth with the helmet of salvation and the sword of the Spirit, and which is the word of God, with all man in prayer and supplication, Father. We will come forth in these next three days praying with all man in prayer and with all supplication. Father, we know, God, that your word will not be returned void. But, God, your word will minister to our hearts in a very powerful way. And, God, we thank you, we praise you, and we bless you for it in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Amen. So don't forget, folks, that tomorrow morning at 6 a.m., our fast starts. And I'm going to be coming back to you periodically uh praying with you on the, during these next three days. Amen. I want to come back and encourage you on tomorrow night. I'm going to come back and I'm going to, if, uh, to, no, I don't know about tomorrow because I got to do something tomorrow night, but the, uh, the, the, the day after tomorrow, I'm going to come back and I'm going to encourage you. I'm going to minister to you and I'm going to strengthen you for that, for that last day. Amen. For that, for that second and third day, because you see, this is very important. God is going to do something very powerful and God is looking for a people that will honor him through prayer and fasting. And I believe that you are that people. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Glory to God. Amen. And so I thank God for you too. I thank God for you too. Uh, amen. Because you see, we're all in this thing together. We're all in this thing together. And what God is doing, God is making a way for each and every one of us 
to see ourselves as he see us. He want each of us to see ourselves as he see us. And, way, and the way God see us, he sees us as overcomers. He sees us as overcomers. See, we overcome Satan by the blood of the lamb and by the word of our testimony. There's an enemy that's telling you that no matter what you do, you're not going to make it. You're going to fail. But there's a God that telling you that you can do all things through Christ who strengthened you. Because greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. There's an enemy telling you that this sickness, you'll never recover from it. But there's a God that's telling you that he bore your sicknesses and he carried your diseases. And by his stripes, you are healed. Amen. But there's an enemy telling you that, that you're... You, he, that uh, doubt has overtaken your heart. But there's a God that's telling you, fear not. Amen. Neither let your heart be afraid. Because he said that I am with you. I will strengthen you. I will uphold you by the power of my righteousness. By the right hand of my righteousness. Isaiah 41 verse 10. Amen. God is there right now where you are. And he's there to bring you through. Everything that the devil said to you, God is showing you that it is not true. That you should listen to the word and not to a dictator. Amen. The enemy is a dictator. And he's not going to tell you the truth. He's going to lie to you. Why? Because he wants to deceive you. He wants to bring you into bondage. Amen. God wants to do something in your life. And I'm encouraging you, during these last, the next three days, we're going to be fasting and praying these next three days from 6 a.m. to 6 p.m. I mean, this is not just going without food, folks. Don't do this just to go without food. If you do this, please pray. Pray while you're fasting. Pray while you're doing without food from 6 in the morning to 6 p.m. Amen. Do a, a pray as much as you can and, and get in the word as much as you can. See, what, I will, what I'm going to do, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, to, uh, because I got one of them smartphones, you know, and I got a Bible on my smartphone, I can listen to my Bible while I'm out working or whatever I'm doing. I can be listening to my Bible. Amen. And I encourage you to, to some form or another, if you can't read, put it on where you can listen to it. You need to get the word in you these, during these next three days. It's so important during these next three days that you get the word into you. Amen. Amen. Glory to God. And so God is, God is making it possible for us all to come together in the spirit. We may not all can come together in a one room, but we can all come together in the spirit. Because where the Spirit of the Lord is, there's liberty. Amen. And he that the Son set free is free indeed. I believe many of you are going to be set free. Many of you are going to be healed during this time. Many families are going to be restored during this time. Amen. The anointing is going to lift burdens and it's going to destroy yokes. Remember, God has sent his angel before you. Be careful and listen to his instructions. He's already been dispatched. And he's gone before you. He's going to make your crooked places straight and your rough places smooth. He's going to help you to overcome the adversary that is working, trying to hinder you, trying to stop or block you. He's going to show you how to overcome him. You see, we overcome Satan by the blood of the Lamb, by the word of our testimony. So keep your heart at peace and don't allow fear or doubt to come in. Because once that happens, faith is void. So keep fear and doubt out and let faith arise from within. Let God arise and your enemies will be scattered. I love you guys. I'm praying for you. I look forward to this corporate prayer during these next three days with all of you. Amen. Remember, we are praying at nine in the morning.
12 at noon and 3 in the evening. Those are the designated prayer time. But during a time of prayer and fasting, you pray throughout the day. Set your alarm clocks on your phones so that you won't miss these prayer time. I got my phone set for 9, this is for 8.57 in the morning. And I got it set for 11.57 at noon. I got it set for 2.57 in the evening. That'll give me a, that'll give me a few minutes to get into a place where I can pray. Amen. So I set it two minutes ahead of time so that I have a, a couple minutes to get myself in position so I can pray without being bothered. And the prayer time is only for 10 minutes at a time on those designated times. At 9 in the morning, 12 at noon, and 3 in the evening, they're only for 10 minutes at a time on those des designated times. And, and I want you to, to expect a visitation from the Lord. Amen. I want you to expect a visitation from the Lord. Practice during these prayer times. Practice the presence of God. Practice walking in His presence. Practice standing in His presence. And I'm telling you, it's gonna it's gonna affect you. It's gonna really affect you spiritually if you would if you would do it. It's gonna it's gonna it's gonna minister to your heart big time if you would do it. Practice His presence during these next three days. Amen. As we are fasting and praying for the next three days, practice walking in the presence of God. Making an effort. Amen. Making an effort to walk in his presence. Amen. And I guarantee you, I guarantee you, your life is going to take on new meaning. And you're going to experience the love of God like you never experienced before. I, I'm telling you. Amen. So God bless you. This is Pastor Larry, New Life in Christ Jesus Church, Sacramento, California. We love you. We are praying for you. Amen. And you guys be blessed. Be blessed. I look forward to praying with you guys on tomorrow morning at 9 a.m. And again at 12 p.m. And again at 3 p.m. Don't forget, in the morning at 9 a.m., we're praying for Jerusalem. At 12 p.m., we're praying for the body of Christ. At 3 p.m., we're praying for our, we're praying for our government. Amen. And those of you from other countries, you pray for your government. You pray for your spiritual leaders at 12 noon. Amen. And then at 9 a.m., we all pray for Jerusalem. Every nation should be praying for Jerusalem. Amen. Now you pray on your own time zone. You don't try to, you don't, you don't try to, you, I don't, don't try to wait for my time zone because I'm not waiting for your time zone. You pray on your own time zone. At 9 a.m., you pray on your own time zone. 12 noon, you pray on your own time zone. And at 3 p.m., you pray on your own time zone. Amen. But just think, if all these time zones get covered in prayer, we all are going to experience the presence of the Lord like never before. Remember, practice walking in His presence tomorrow, and your life will be touched by the Spirit of God. I promise you. God bless you. Until then, have a blessed day. This is Pastor Larry. Have a good day. Bye-bye.